This is I. This is my podcast, Enhanced Perception. So to enhance means to increase, to intensify, to further improve the quantity, the value, the extent of desirability. And perception is the neurophysiological process, including memory, by which an organism interprets external stimuli. So when you enhance your perception, you have become enlightened. So enlightenment can be described as a way of regarding, understanding, and interpreting things. So when you become enlightened, you have enhanced your perception. When you enhance your perception, you have become enlightened. And once we become enlightened, you can touch the divine. It does not matter where you are. The mind is capable of making a heaven out of hell or a hell out of heaven. The choice is yours. The time is now. You decide what you want to do. You make the choice. You decide how the outcome of your life. Shakespeare says, there's nothing good or bad in the universe. Thinking makes it so. Our life is a result of how we think and how we think controls our feelings and our feelings controls our action. See, when we talk about wellness, healthy living, it affects every area of our lives, relationship, work, the job we do, how we relate with our coworkers, how we relate with the opposite sex, how we relate with our kids, family. Most parents do not believe in having a relationship with their kids. They feel like being friends with their kids diminishes the power of being a parent. And I disagree with this. I say you can be both your kids' friends and also a parent at the same time. You find out that when you find out what those kids love to do, you participate in their activities. Check this out. Try this. If this doesn't work for you, come back and call me a liar. Find out what movies your kids are watching, what they enjoy. Watch that movie, or better still, watch that movie with them. You will totally change the way they see you, the way they respond to you. They will relate to you. They will open up to you in ways that you never thought possible. So you can be your kids' friends and at the same time, a parent. See, back in the days, I don't know about you, but I grew up in that kind of parenting where it's like an authoritarian parenting. Whatever my parents say goes, that's final. But you understand and realize most families are having issues today because they still operate in this same mindset and principle, and it doesn't work. It does not work. Let anybody tell me that they have the best parental style or best relationship with their kids by being an authoritative parent. It does not work. It does not work in America. It does not work in, in Nigeria. It does not work in Africa, in anywhere. The kids might be quiet when you scream or shout at them, but it doesn't mean they respect you. It doesn't mean they're going to talk about you in a positive way when you are not there. See, I think the best thing for us to have is both love and respect. You want your kids to respect and love you at the same time. You cannot get kids to love you or respect you at the same time if you're not their friends, if you operate on this authoritative type of upbringing. What I'm saying is this kind of mindset also affects relationship. You realize that most relationships in the African community, they still believe in that concept of whatever the man says goes. That's ultimate. That's final. That is not going to work, not in today's day and age. I watch a lot of the TV shows. Anyways, let me not go into TV shows because some of the reality shows we watch is just bogus. It's all choreographed by producers and blown out of proportion for ratings and for sales, right? One of them, which I'm not going to name the name of that show, but I was uh, at a restaurant recently. I was at a Dave and Buster's with my kid. I took my son out to hang out and have a good time because he enjoys going out and playing in, in those kind of places. And... Lo and behold, they were filming one of those reality shows. 
like I said, I'm not naming the names, but I live in Orange County. So you will go figure out what show was being filmed. I'm bringing this up because <clears throat> reality shows paint an illusion that today people believe whatever they see on TV as the truth. They believe it as the law, as a gold standard. But it's not true. If you know anything about production, about how reality shows are made, you understand that most of the scenarios are set up. There is a framework of what the producers want. These guys, they spend money, they do research, they know what the audience wants to see, what sells, what will move people, and they give it to you. And it's sad that most people watch these things and they call it truth. They call it truth. That is so sad that society today is harder for people to filter what they see on TV and what is real. Another thing that has become a gold standard today is virality. Anything that goes viral, people call it real. People call it the truth. It's sad to say that once something is viral, we tend to accept it as the biblical truth or the universal truth, but truth is not whatever goes viral. Truth cannot be determined by just virality. Virality helps when something is true. Don't get me wrong. When something is true, virality helps. Yes, no doubt. But virality on its own is not truth. Truth can be viral. Yes, truth can go viral, but virality is not truth. So what I'm saying is you becoming aware, you enhancing your perception will help you in navigating this world that we live in today. Somebody was sharing something recently about Instagram or social media, how people can create this illusion of that they are living a good life, is showing you these hotels and cars and nice clothes and restaurants and things. That's their lifestyle. But we know most of those people cannot even afford a fast food meal, talk less of a three squared meals in a nice rest, fancy restaurant. Most people go to those high-end restaurants just to take pictures to post on social media to give people an illusion that they are living a certain way. Look, I'm not knocking whatever anybody is doing, whatever you do that makes you happy. But what I would say is, why don't you do this? It is very possible for you to manifest whatever lifestyle you're portraying. If that is your goal, if that's what you want, you can create it. And you create it silently, quietly, inside. This is how you create anything, right? If you want a car, any car, Go to the dealership, take a picture of you sitting in that car. Even test drive that car. Feel the vibration, the energy, the sound of the car, the smell of the interior. Yes, feel it. Take a picture, but go to your quiet place, living that experience, owning that car, driving that car. Speak to yourself reprogram your consciousness to the point where you believe that this car is yours. Once this gets into your subconscious feeling, that is how you draw those things to you. You start manifesting these things. When you are making so much noise about something, you don't even believe in it. That is being fake. <laughs> that is living a false life. Understand what I'm saying? They say in Hollywood, you fake it till you make it. Yes, that can be possible. Yes, you can fake it till you make it. As a matter of fact, that's how manifesting works. You fake it till you make it. But you don't fake it based on what people say to make it. You have to believe it. Then you start manifesting it. That is how it works. That's the law of attraction. That's how you attract things to you by you believing it yourself. I think it's Bob Marley that says you can deceive everybody else in this world, but you cannot fool yourself. You can fool everybody else, but you cannot fool yourself. If you fool yourself, you are lost. You are lost cause. I'm sorry. There's no other way for me to say it, but that's what it is. Again, back to relationship. 
Can you manifest the love of your life? Yes, anything is possible. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. If that is your priority, you can manifest it, but only you can manifest it. It's not what I say. It's not what your pastor says. It's not what the preacher tells you. A preacher can motivate you, can inspire you, but until that truth that, that anybody else tells you becomes your truth, that is when you start seeing results. That truth has to be your truth. I'm just sharing some nuggets, throwing some reality about life, how things work, because why? I guess because that is my mission. That is my vision. That is my calling. That is my purpose in life. To help you be, do, and have what you desire. I have experienced some amazing truths, amazing things happen in my life. And I'm sharing with you things that have totally transformed my life. When I reflect five years ago, I know where I was. <laughs> and I know how I came from there to where I am now. It's been a journey, a beautiful journey, no doubt. It's been an amazing journey. And um, I'm grateful. I am very grateful. And uh, I appreciate the whole journey. Now, one thing I share is that I was actually telling someone this today in a podcast. The best way to succeed in life is to fail. Fail fast. That's how you learn fast. That's how you become successful fast. The amount of failures and missed opportunities you have is what's going to take you to where you need to be. That's what's going to give you the success you need. You cannot have success if you don't have failure. So failures is a powerful good thing. It helps you become a success. Tell me one successful individual on this planet Earth that has never failed. Tell me one, one. Just share, tell me one person. Is it Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett? Who? Obama, Biden, Donald Trump? Anybody. Tell me, anybody who's a multi-millionaire, billionaire. Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey. Name names of anybody that is very successful that has never failed. You will be at a loss if you try to tell me anybody because there's nobody. Failure is success turned the other way around. The more failures you have in life means you're closer to your success. What I'm saying is whatever you want to do in life, start doing it now. The more times you fail, the better. You just need to learn, fail enough times that it becomes a success. Anyways, I'm going to end this right now. It's been a pleasure to be able to come to your home, to serve you, to share some ideas and things that can begin to revolutionize and change the way we see things. We see relationship, we see work, anything. Anything we want in life is all about a shift in perspective perception. Once you shift your perception, the thing you look at changes. Think about it today. What you used to call a problem with the mindset and experience you have now, those things that happened in the past are just like nothing, right? Because you've been through it. But at the time when it was happening, it was a problem. It was a difficulty. It was a challenge. It was something unsurmountable. But now that you've been through it, that's what we call experience. Experience, we say, is the best teacher. But experience is what wisdom is based off of. So you have to go through things to know how things do not work, to know how things will work better, to know how to become who you are destined to be. Thank you very much for listening. This is Ike Onoha, and this is Enhanced Perception. Thank you. Bye-bye.